What is up everybody? My name is Andrew and welcome back to Space Engineer Survival episode number 44. We are still on Pertim. This is the second full episode back on Pertim where we're going to be uh, sticking around for a little bit. Um, in this episode we're going to do a little bit of work on, uh, well actually ships because ever since we've gotten here we've had a little bit of a ship problem. Um, most notably we haven't really had a welder and that's caused some holdups on the the, uh, the museum down there as well as the fort up there that we don't have a welder to bring materials back and forth and we don't have anything we can weld with. Um, um, which is especially hard when it comes to those heavy armor blocks, um, which we have a lot of up there. But anyways, yeah, so this episode we're going to rectify that by building ourselves a welder uh, ship. We're also going to build a second miner ship because I think the one that we have over there that's currently inside the little bunker. In fact, we're going to visit it. Um, the one over here is not quite a, an amazing miner. It's pretty good at mining out area uh, for stuff like this. But it's not really great for mining materials. It can't really store that much. So I kind of want to make a bigger miner that will be able to handle uh, bigger mining operations. And I think that's going to be pretty good. And it's going to tie in especially with what I want to do in the future. Um, which we'll go over in the future. <laughs> but yeah, so this episode we're going to build a couple of ships. Um, and we're also going to... What else do we want to do? I want to try and finish this base if, if at all possible. I want to get this entire thing welded up. So the welder is going to come into play there. Uh, and we also have to get a lot of iron. So the miner is going to come into play there. So we have uses for both of the ships that we're about to start building. So you guys already know that my ship designing skills could use some work. We're just going to try and put something together and see if it works pretty much. That's how we're going to do things. I'm going to try to come up with a cool little design. Maybe try and make it look a little bit less like all of the welders I've built in the past. Um, so let's go back down to the main base and let's start building this thing. Um, real quick, what I think I want to do as well is expand this little uh, landing pad area. Because um, I think that would help us out a little bit. So let's grab that color and we're going to use uh, half armor blocks for this instead of the full armor blocks because I want to save as much as I can. Uh, there we go. And we'll do a full block right here on the end just to cap it off and that should look pretty good. Uh, we could even connect it there if we want to. I guess that's going to be fine. Uh, so yeah, now we're going to have a lot more space to kind of build in. Let me run through and weld this stuff up. We don't have our welder quite yet, uh, but I can... I can weld this with my hands because we have plenty of steel plates on the base and the connector is right there. I really want to get a level 3 <laughs> welder if possible. Do we have any platinum on this base, I wonder? Did I check this already? I don't think I checked this since I got back here. We might actually have some. Um, no clue where we would have gotten it, but uh, platinum. Yes, we do actually have some. So I bet you I could actually make a, a level 3 welder then if I wanted to. Let's go ahead and try that. Uh, no, it's gonna it's gonna look like we're actually out of iron here, so that's why we need to make that uh, miner so we can go and do the uh, iron expedition. I'm gonna paint this a different color because I want to make this like a nicer gray or something, I don't know. Let's go for the dust and see how that looks with this. Okay, I think that looks more realistic. Probably around like episode 20 or something, someone was saying, can you please add a bunch of sand to the base? It doesn't look very realistic without all the sand because we only had sand in this area right here. In fact, we probably need to go through and add some sand onto, what in the heck happened here? I think lightning struck this. Uh, we probably need to go through and add some sand onto this thing as well, do like a big sand pass to make it look a little bit more realistic as well. But for now, I think this is gonna be fine. Um, well, we could just do the sand, let's just do the sand pass, why not? It's been so many episodes, that poor guy has been waiting that long. Let's just let's just run through and give sand to everything. Okay, I gave it a bit of a paint pass, and I think it looks a little bit better, especially this wall. It looks way better, as well as how this kind of blends with the, uh, the I almost said grass, the sand. It looks way better with the, um, with the dust, as well as this right here. Looks really good. Uh, I tried to, as well, go through here and make it a little more shiny under here. I don't know if the roof... I guess the roof looks a little bit unrealistic. But I don't know if I can really do anything about that since it's only one block thick. Unless I made it two blocks and kind of just uh, made it look better. Although I could use the little... They have little armor um, uh, faces I could use to make this look a little bit better if I wanted to. But that's a little bit more work. So if, if you guys want to see this look a little bit more realistic and less sandy in here, if it matters, uh, we could do that at some point. But anyway, let's get started on our uh, on our ship. It's actually getting nighttime, so that's gonna be fun. Um, you know what I'm gonna do real quick before I do anything else? I'm gonna move this one over right there uh, because I feel like these are a little bit too close and I want to have a little bit more room. So let's go ahead and do that. It's gonna be really easy. There we go, something like that. And then we'll add our conveyor piece right there. Now, I wish, by the way, it would be really cool if, if they had a connector that was just as thin as the, uh, like the magnetic plate. So you know how they made the magnetic plate as a low profile version of the um, landing gear. It'd be really cool if they did the same thing for the connector. Made like a low profile version that you could just kind of connect to, you know? Uh, I think that'd be really cool. All right, and then right here we'll put these two blocks back. And there we go. Now we have a little walkway with catwalks on either side showcasing the uh, 
um, connectors down there, or the conveyors down there. And now we have plenty more room. We have a lot more room here to work with. But um, anyway, let's actually start on this ship that we're going to do. Okay, we like weird designs, so this is the weird design I'm kind of going with for now. It might change, but I'm thinking we're going to go with a two-seat design, one on the left and one on the right. And then uh, we have all these connections right here. This one is backwards, my bad. Okay, there we go. Uh, and now we can attach these things as well. So we'll have one there, one there, and one there. Gives us a nice little uh, a nice little mining area, as well as a lot of visibility out the front where we can see where we're going, which is going to be kind of nice. But yeah, it's going to have one large container like this. I think that's all we're going to have. I don't know that we need a smaller container. Large containers store a lot more than small containers, or medium containers do. Um, cargo, let me, let me actually check. Okay, so a medium cargo container stores 33,000 liters, while a large cargo container stores 156,000. So if our miner over there has four, uh, four I think, medium cargo, that is going to be four times this is 1, 120, 130,000 roughly. Uh, whereas this one has 156. So this one right here is more than these, than the like four that that miner has over there. Now, do I want to add two? Ah, Reaver. Uh, we're gonna have to go up to our base as fast as we can. Let's get up there. Oh, this is dangerous uh, We need to find Bert and Ernie or one of them and hopefully the Reaver comes after us up here I think it is going to though. Okay, let's get in there uh, Hop in here. We're gonna go to let's just go to this one. Why not? Uh, I don't even know where it is Where even is it? I'm in the wrong uh, thing, obviously. Okay, I heard it crash below. I entered one of the side turrets by accident, so it was facing the wrong direction, and I actually have no clue where that thing was. Although I just heard it crash over there, so I think it flew over us, and then crash landed over there. Um, so my bad, a little bit of combat. We didn't actually get any combat footage because I was looking at presumably one of these turrets right here. <laughs> so, but uh, have no fear. Bert and Ernie cleaned it up very easily. We really need more lights on this base, don't we? Good lord. Oh, we have a sandstorm coming in, okay. I was like, is it already becoming daytime? No, we have a sandstorm coming in. Uh, I have to figure out what we want to do with thrusters. Oh uh, yeah, we could do it like this. So I put a block right there, and then I could have one of these on each of those, and that would kind of satisfy, uh, probably satisfy all the thrusts that we need for this thing. Just having them like that. We could do something like this, where we could just literally throw another large at it and see how that works. And we want to, yeah, we want to face it like this. So if we did that, it would be about this big, which is pretty big for a miner. Well, it's not actually horrible. And then we have this right here. So this would come all the way back here, and bam, that would be the end. So it'd be about that big. We would probably double up on these, uh, on these thrusters here, so we could carry more, like so. And I haven't used any thrust uh, calculators either, so I don't know how much this makes sense. But uh, yeah, we'd have those pretty much okay well we know we're gonna want some batteries uh actually i've never tried these warfare batteries these are the same are they the same as the other battery okay so this is just a reskin okay i've never tried these ones but it looks like it's just a reskin of these ones but uh how can you can you actually tell how much power is in these things oh you can okay but it's on the side like that so i would probably want to stick these like this we'd have one battery there and we'd have one battery over here Okay, so consider this weird shaped ship. Uh, it's got four giant thrusters pointing downward. It's got uh, four batteries as well to run all this stuff. And it's got only a couple of frontward facing thrusters. We need to add more. We could add another one on the side like that. I want to try something because there's an article that says that the damage range for these is only one block. For these small grade ones is only one block. So if that's true, I can really kind of squeeze everything down by doing this. Because we have one block on each side. If it's not true, I'm going to end up damaging the heck out of my ship. Where did that one go? I don't know where I just placed that. Oh, I placed it on top of it. I'm going to end up damaging the heck out of my ship, but uh, if it is true, I save a lot of space just by having it one block here of clearance, one block there of clearance. Um, and I could even do it on the back side right here. So, like, right here I could throw these guys, then boom, boom, just like that. And have plenty of clearance. All right, I kind of like what we're doing here. We have enough forward and backward. Actually, honestly, I don't think we need this many uh, backward facing thrusters. Let's just remove these two down here. We'll only uh, keep the, we'll keep three on the side because we don't need this many forward. I mean, that's that's a crazy amount. It's just adding weight at that point. Um, 
The only reason we need this many forward facing and we don't need that many backward facing is because when you mine, you typically end up going like mining down like this. So the forward facing has a lot of uh, hold on it. Whereas you don't typically mine facing up like that. So you don't have to have that many thrusters facing backwards. Uh, what we could do here instead though is if we remove these guys, we could throw some side facing thrusters and that's what we really need on this ship. So let's go bam bam like that. And same thing all the way over here, side facing thrusters just like this. Oops, not, not just like this. Slightly like this, but turned around. There it is. All right, everybody, say hello to this completed miner that's not painted yet, and it probably could use a, a, a finishing touch of maybe some blocks, some, some style elements, but anyway, it's pretty much done. It's got all of the functional components on it, I think. We're gonna give it a little test. Let's uh, start by removing it from this and see if it floats. It floats! Okay, cool. Uh, next, let's hop inside and see if it can turn and move. It can turn and move! Awesome! Uh, what about if I... Okay. So I was just checking to see if I could uh, put on the thrusters and if it would work. Uh, it does appear to work fine with all the thrusters going. Yeah, okay. With It went up to 80%, but I think it's fine uh, mostly. We'll need to get this thing under load to actually test it properly, but it seems good so far. I'm going to run in here throw a block tool on here just so we have that. Yep, there we go. Uh, and yeah, okay. All right, two spotlights have been added, one on the top and one on the bottom. So that should give us a light that's not obscured by this drill right here. Hey, and while we're hanging out, it's, actually, it's actually becoming daytime, so that's good. All right, we only have about half charge on this thing, but I think that's enough for us to get going. Let's hop into our driver's seat, which I guess we're gonna use as this one right here. Oh, this is iron, just like that, okay. So we do actually have iron right next to our base, it's good. All right, let's get in there and, uh, and try and get a little bit of it and see if um, see how the ship does. Uh, oh, okay, I'm already feeling the left-right movement needs a couple more thrusters, so we need to pay attention to that. Whoops, let me throw block tools on here. And let's get in there with this ship. I'm gonna right-click mine a little bit, even though we already have a tunnel. I wanna widen it a little bit, because this ship's a little bit wider than the other one was. Start left-click mining, get the rest of the siren, or get as much as we can carry, pretty much. Uh, our ejector should be working overtime to launch all of that stone that we don't need out the bottom of our ship, which is exactly what we want to happen. On a real quick check, this is only ejecting... Okay. <laughs> it was ejecting a lot, so I had to wonder if it was only ejecting stone or if it was uh, ejecting our iron as well. Just wanted to make sure. All right, let's hop back in this. I want to check how much we have currently. Uh, we're sitting at 181k, which is pretty good, and the ship currently... Oh my gosh, that was dangerous. Currently does not have any problems flying at all, so it's good. Okay, we have a lot of iron. We have 400k, 400k iron. Uh, we should probably start thinking about heading back. I don't know if our left and right thrusters are really liking this. Uh, also, our battery is starting to get a little bit low, uh, just because we're using more power to try and fly the ship. However, luckily, I do think we can handle a lot more iron than this. Well, let, let's get out of here and see. I think we can, though, because the, uh, the thrusters aren't at capacity, even just, like, chilling here. Because I know they use 50% of the battery uh, when, when I'm going upward. Yeah, wow, this ship can easily handle more. How much of the, the container is full, actually? We have one full container and one partial. So we could maybe... Well, I don't know if we could completely fill up this container, but we could get a lot more if we wanted to. This miner is really good. Um, the only thing is it's a little slow to mine because it's only got three of the miners. So maybe more of that and we'd be a little bit better off. But, I mean, this is looking pretty good. We did manage to damage our uh, connector, I think, but whatever. If you, if you mine enough, you're going to end up damaging your connector. It's a sign of good mining. <laughs> All right, let's head back toward our base. Uh, keeping an eye on our battery level, we don't want to fall out of the sky. I guess, by the way, this, uh, this generation that we're building in this episode of ships is going to be our third generation, I think, of ships in this series. Um, at least our third generation miner, because we built a... Uh, uh, this is our third miner we built. The, the, second, the first miner couldn't really do much, the second miner could do a little bit, and the third miner can hold quite a bit. So if we're counting generations, it's our third generation. All right, that's our new miner right there. Um, what we need to do now is we need to get a welder up and running. So we've done miner, we've done a little bit of mining, it's time to get the welder going. And I'll call this our third generation welder as well, because hopefully it'll be able to carry just as much as this miner can on its mission. So let's start with that welder. So for our third generation welder, I think we're going to do something very similar in terms of size. So how many blocks across is this? This is uh, one, two, three, four, five blocks and then one in the middle. So we have 11 blocks across. I think I like that uh, size. Um, 
and it gives us a lot of room. So especially with 11 blocks across, we could have one block in the middle and then two large uh, uh, containers on either side. That would actually fit pretty well. Uh, and the reason I want it to be so big is because I want this to be like the welder to end all welders. It's going to have a lot of storage. It's going to have a lot of thrust capacity. Uh, it's really going to be the thing that we're going to uh, use to move things back and forth if we need to. And then if we need to eventually, well, uh, maybe we'll make a separate hauler as well. Uh, if we want to move things back. If we ever make like, okay, so I still want to do a long, long time ago, way back when I first started this series, one of the ideas I had was having a base kind of over there where all those, uh, there are a lot of ore spots over there. So having some sort of like mining base where we, it could really have a lot of refineries and pretty much that's it. It would just refine stuff uh, over there. Um, I think that'd be really cool. And we even had the idea of having a little train track going there, but I think that might be a little too crazy. But if we had that, we could have some sort of hauler that would, uh, sort of be the same size, but would have a lot more hauling capacity, I think would be really cool. So maybe when we do that, we would have an actual hauler. We wouldn't have to use our same welder for that. Um, so I don't have to focus on that much hauling, but I think having two large containers is still gonna be pretty nice for our, our hauler. Uh, and I think we're gonna go with a very similar design actually. Um, in fact, you know what? I might make it a little bit one block bigger than this because I think uh, having the two seats right here is kind of cool and I think it looks good. But since there's only one of me, let's just do the one seat for the for the uh, the welder, just so we have a kind of a different design a little bit. Um, okay, let's get this thing started and uh, see where we can go from here. Starting it off right there with a block. Okay, I like the idea of having the uh, the, the whatever these are. Um, the 2x3 cockpits over here, uh, but I switched it out for a 3x3 three three instead because I want to have that middle area, that center line, where I can kind of have a, a, uh, a connector that can connect to the base. I think that just looks a little bit nicer. Um, so yeah, now we have two uh, storage. We have plenty of space to put thrusters. So um, the same thing kind of goes with a, uh, a welder as it does with a, a, a miner. You do need a lot of forward facing thrusts because a lot of the time you're kind of facing down like this, welding things on the ground. So forward and downward facing thrusts are important. Um, so let's get some of these things set up. We're just gonna use our standard uh, sci-fi atmospheric thrusters and we're gonna stick them on the sides like this. Two facing down like that. How many did this have? This has four. So I guess we do four as well here. A very It's actually looking very similar in design, this one. Uh, and then we'll have a couple of upward facing thrusts, I guess, in the middle like this. Oh, actually, you know what? I bet you, uh, now that we delivered all that iron, I bet you our uh, welder is actually ready. Let me check here. Uh, yes, we have our level three elite welder here. Okay, so let me throw that one in there and then I can now uh, press G, go to character tools and I can assign our level three welder. Awesome, we have sped things up a little bit, cool. Okay, let's continue welding this thing up and see what space we have left to work with. Okay, this thing's looking pretty good. We have a storm blowing in, but uh, we have plenty of space here that we can use for other stuff. So those uh, upward facing well, um, uh, thrusters, I think I was gonna have them here, but I don't think having them there is a good idea because uh, we have the batteries there instead. So what I think we're gonna do is we're gonna throw some upward facing thrusters kind of on the side in here. Uh, so they're kind of out of the way. You might not even see them. Uh, typically, but they'll still do uh, what they need to do. Okay, so the only things we're really missing are left-right thrusters, which we can stick kind of on the front here. I'm gonna put uh, three on each side, I think, should be fine. Um, that's not great if we have a full load, but it will probably still be fine. <laughs> All right, everybody, the third generation, Reaver. <laughs> the third generation thing is complete. Let's get to this real quick though, because I need to fend off a Reaver and then I'll show you the ship that we built. Uh, so we have a Reaver incoming. Let's actually get on an actual gun this time. Hopefully, if we're fast enough, uh, should be this one. Bzz. Where is our Reaver? Over here? I can't even aim at this one. Okay, let's get on this one. Where is the Reaver? That's not out. What is it attacking over there? I see something green and I see the Reaver. Let me get on the other gun, which is here. Green Reaver. It's just kind of chilling over there. I mean, I have a weapon with me. I guess we can go and take a look. I'm a little bit afraid, but uh, but we'll go and see it from a... I don't know, have Reavers been updated so they can shoot farther than like 800 meters? Because if so, we might be in a little bit of danger. But I just want to kind of peek over this right here, see what we're dealing with. This is not the best weapon to, being, to be attacking a Reaver, of course. Okay, it's just chilling over there. There's something right there. I don't know what it is, though. I... Oh, that's an unknown signal. Is that just coincidence that that landed right next to that? We might be fine. Okay, yeah. I think we're fine. Hey, Reaver. How's it going? Are you good? 
You good, buddy? I don't think you're good, are you? Yeah, no, you're not good. You've seen better days. Oh my gosh. Rip Reaver. Any weapons on you that I need to be aware of? Yeah, that's a weapon, but it can't shoot me. That's also a weapon up there. I don't know if it is intact. It is intact. Let's just uh, tear that apart. Okay, cool. For materials. Imagine if that could just shoot me right now. <laughs> the AI was still controlling it or something. No, okay. looks like we have a lot of ice uh, and a lot of stuff. Let me actually bring... This is a good mission for our... Um, for our little uh, welder that we just made. Let's bring it over here. Not that we're gonna weld anything, but that we're gonna uh, carry stuff back. All right, so yeah, we're about to bring out our little welder. We haven't even tested it. So let me real quick test it to make sure it actually flies. Yes, it does. Awesome. Uh, so this thing has two giant, or four rather, giant downward facing thrusters, a couple of upward facing thrusters in here, just four of them, a couple of frontward facing thrusters, a lot of backward facing thrusters. Actually, we probably need more frontward facing, but we'll figure that out later, I guess. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's got two gyros as well. Let's head over there. Uh, we killed the, we the, the only weapon that was on that thing that, uh, was a turret, so hopefully it won't shoot us. Uh, yeah, we're definitely gonna need more forward-facing thrusters, because we don't stop very easily. We're just gonna have to aim upward a little bit if we want to stop. But anyway, let's get down here to land. I actually have landing gears on this thing on the bottom, so we can actually land it properly. Okay, we are landed. We might actually want to also extend where the landing gears are, just one, because I don't like how close these are to the ground here. Uh, but yeah, okay. Let's, uh, let's hop in here. All we wanted- we don't have any grinder on this thing, so we're gonna have to, uh, manually do this. Which- these are only gonna be one steel plate. Is it even worth it? <gasps> well, I guess if it would've exploded, it already would've. <laughs> okay, um, let's grab some of this stuff. Whoa! Okay, I'm lucky I didn't die right there. I, I grinded the uh, missiles by accident and they exploded. I didn't know that was a thing. Okay. I'm just very glad that the explosion didn't actually hurt me. <laughs> I feel like it should have. Alright, is there anything else in the area now that I've grabbed that? That's the crash site. I don't see any other materials, just kind of chilling. Um, I think we may have grabbed everything. That's a rock over there. Yeah. I think we got everything. All right, let's get back in our uh, in our welder and fly back to base with a full inventory. Not a full inventory, but you know some stuff. Oh man, yeah, another gyro would be really nice. This is actually taking a long time to turn around. But anyways, yeah, we're a little bit low on the uh, the power side. You can see we only have six minutes of flight left, so we're gonna have to gun it a little bit and uh, and then just kind of idle our way over to the base as we slow down, and um, and we should make it there within the six minutes that it gave us. Might be going a little fast, actually, but well, maybe it's maybe it's just fine. I, my hands are off the controls right now. I'm just letting it kind of coast on over. Uh, off camera, I'm gonna do a little bit of work on these. I think both of these ships, they're very similar, which is why uh, I actually kind of like this a lot because it kind of looks like they're the same generation of ship, which they really are. Uh, I'll call it our third generation, uh, just like I called it for the other one, our third generation welder. Even though I think we only had one welder before this. Um, but technically, it's our third generation of ships in general, so that's pretty cool. Alright, welcome back to base, everybody. We now have two ships here, a welder and a drill. The welder's gonna help us finish uh, finish up what's in there and also the museum. So, um, yeah, all we need to do with the welder is we need to add a couple of gyros, as well as lower this landing gear thing one block, I think. Okay, I've done a few modifications to our welder here. Uh, I've doubled the thrust on the sides, so not only do we have these downward side ones, we also have upward side ones now, which um, which I think are going to help us out a little bit. I've also doubled the uh, thrust that we have going forward by adding these ones back here, which are going to help us out a little bit. I've also removed the landing gears and added instead this uh, magnetic plate here, this giant magnetic plate, or these giant magnetic plates, which not only will allow us to land easily, but will also help us in case we want to use this ship for hauling things. Um, since this has a lot of thrust, this is actually a good candidate for hauling things. As long as we empty out these containers, it should be able to haul things just fine. Um, other than that, I think we're looking good. Oh, I added two more gyros as well uh, to the front here. That are going to help out a little bit. Um, off camera, I think I'm going to come through and do a paint job for both of these ships uh, to make them look a little bit nicer. Um, I mean, I don't mind the uh, the, the sandy look. It, it kind of fits with everything, but yeah, we'll probably do a little paint job. I also I'm going to redo this cockpit maybe. I don't know how we're going to end up doing it, but it would be kind of cool to have like a glass windshield, I guess. I don't know. Both of these really. I don't know. I, I think it'd be kind of cool to have something. Um, 
that looks a little bit nicer. But anyway, yeah, that is our welder and that is our drill. Um, should I put these on the workshop? I guess I should. Uh, look in the description below. Hopefully I have a link of these in the workshop. If I don't, then yell at me and I'll uh, come in and throw a link up there uh, in case you guys want to download these on your own and mess around with them. Uh, third generation ships. We'll eventually make more third generation ships, I think. Probably a hauler would be really nice. Just a dedicated hauling ship. Maybe even a grinder. Who knows? I have plenty of materials. I have surplus, so making these ships is really not that hard, especially now that we have kind of a design in mind. These ships really do look very similar, don't they? <laughs> oh, wait, we have a lot of iron. Okay, I've loaded up our um, our ship, actually. Oh, I just realized we should probably add lights to this thing. All right, we've now got lights. Let's turn this off recharge mode. Let's disconnect this from the base, and let's go up here. We're going to finish the uh, the inside of the, of the little bunker we have up here. And maybe Reavers will attack. If they do, we'll deal with them swiftly and justly. But we have plenty of materials on us. Oh, we are actually maxing out if we go forward and up at the same time. So we might need to find a way to add more batteries. Small batteries, maybe? I don't know exactly what we'll need. But one large battery should cover it, really. But we're not going to weld that right now because we want to get in here and weld this stuff. Oh, we touched the side. How close are we actually on this? It is a little bit tight. Yeah, it's a little tight, but it still fits. Okay. Don't take that out of context. Okay, block tools. Let's go in here and just start welding this stuff up. We should have everything we need here. Hopefully. Yep, we do. Okay, cool. Um, we'll use just one prong over here on this side. <laughs> there we go. And I think that's everything over there. Okay, now let's try and get a little bit of this. I wonder if we can do all three of these at once. Yes, we can. That's awesome. Okay. There's our Gen 2 miner right there. Just chilling. Okay, we may have damaged a little bit of this ship by running into it. So let me just do a little pass with my uh, with my welder, see if we can fix up anything we damaged. Charge that up, and here we are. All right, now we have plenty of materials over here that we can work with. Now we still have a little bit of that that we have to work on, but let me just grab some steel plates and I'll do it manually. Oops, I don't know where I just put that. It might even be faster to do it manually, honestly. As long as you can get resupplies. That's the nice thing about the welders, you don't have to resupply. Okay, we're actually almost out of steel plates, and I brought like 4,000 of them. The base is still making some down there, so we'll have some to resupply with, but we're already almost out, which is crazy. But there we go. We have a lot of the blocks uh, welded in. The only things we're missing are pretty much the heavy armor ones. Actually, these are light armor that I can do. And then we're pretty much out of steel plates. Yeah. I could try and get some of these welded in. Let me see how much of this I can get. Because we have a lot of stuff on the thing. We could get everything but the steel plates, probably. Okay, there we go. We Pretty much for all of these, we have six here and six there. So that's 12 total. We have everything except for the steel plates. So that's good. Uh, we just need to come here with uh, 12 times 250 steel plates. Oh, wait. We do actually have plenty of steel plates on us. I didn't even realize this, but the industrial assembler over here had been making some. So we can actually get some of these welded up. In fact, we can probably get all of these welded up. We just need a bunch of steel plates. All right, here we go. You can barely see it because it's dark out now, but um, we now have not all those doors are built, but we now have all these ones built. And then we have that one single one over there built. But now I have this button right here, which uh, these two right here control the doors. So if I press this one, the outer doors will close. So you can see that one, the one that's actually completed closing. If I press the other one, the inner doors will close like this. And once they're closed, if I press the big red button, it'll open both doors. When actually, probably in reality, that should close both doors. That should be the emergency close button. So maybe I'll switch that to close both doors. Or I'll tie it to like a, a programmable block and open slash close both, depending on which this one is in. But anyways, yeah, that's our door system. I think it's still looking pretty good. Oh shoot, we have a reaver coming after us. Okay, hurry to our battle stations! Can we actually get it right this time and see the attack? Let's find out. Uh, we'll go to this one, because this one should be in the right side. Yes. This is a missile launcher, though, so I don't know. Where are you going? Ah. Alright, cool. Um, <laughs> Reavers, everybody! They like to attack those things, I guess. Uh, well, that's fine. I wasn't going to get that anyway. <laughs> Alright, we definitely need to go through here uh, on, like, a lighting pass or something. So I'm thinking columns here, here, and here, and then on the other side, and then we add some lights to them as well to make this place a little bit illuminated. Let's get it done. 
And there we go, that's what I'm talking about. A couple of columns, maybe some beams up top, and some lights to add the area. I don't have my flashlight on right now, so you can see how this lighting is going. I went for kind of like a greenish warm, a warm green color, kind of. Um, it, it, I don't think it looks that bad. I think it looks pretty good. Um, and even, I mean, I'm not gonna turn, well, can I? If I just run in here and press L, will that just turn them off? Yeah, okay. Let me just turn these off and see how it looks with, uh, with no other lights. Yeah, that doesn't look that bad. It's a little bit dim in the uh, center, so a little bit darker than I would like. So maybe we could add some more lights. Uh, I think it's fine for now, though. Um, you can see everything clearly, and usually I'll have my flashlight on anyway. So I think this is going to be good. Um, oh, actually, you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to actually color these beams like a whiter color to see what that looks like. So let me try that and, uh, and check it out. All right, what do you guys think of this color scheme? Kind of a lighter... Uh, beam i think it looks a little bit better and then we colored the uh the back right here a concrete uh red although it looks more like pipe than it doesn't really look like concrete that's why i used it, it actually looks pretty good uh for these pipes i think but anyway yeah that's the color scheme we're going with i'm sure you can see my shadow right there which means the sun is out we've done enough building of ships and building of this stuff for the sun to come all the way out so that's pretty uh we've done a lot in terms of this base right here it's almost done it's not quite we need to get this stuff uh finished up but it's definitely getting there uh, and I really like the how the roof is looking and stuff Actually, do you know what we should do while we're here something that we haven't finished somehow in all of our time being here We should grab these and that's all we want right now and we should finish these windows uh, I mean it's super bright because the the world is very bright when you're inside a dark area The game tries to compensate and it's like super bright in here But when we go out here, we can see that uh, we intended to have windows on these things but instead, we never finished that part, so we don't have them. We just have kind of empty areas. So let's go ahead and put windows in there. Uh, just a little one by one. There we go. How is this face? This is like this. Yeah, just little windows like this. And um, and we'll go uh, run around and finish them up. I think we didn't do this because we didn't have a welder at the time or something, or we were just lazy and had other stuff to do. Uh, but we should really do this once and for all. Get this thing finished up. Because it's been sitting here unfinished, technically, for a very long time. Actually, to be fair, there was more to finishing it. We actually had to finish this part, too. And we had always intended there to be, like, a big giant door that would open and stuff like that. But we never actually got to that part. So that's still to be, to be designed and to be created. Oh my gosh, we have so many ideas for this series that never actually uh, went anywhere. Because I also remember I had an idea for the, the bunker down there to have a, a giant spinning door that was, like, very Fallout uh, style. I think that would have been really cool. Um, and I've actually seen someone do one of those. I saw a YouTube video of someone doing that in Space Engineers. Um, something very similar to a Fallout door where it took like, I don't know, 20 seconds or 30 seconds to open because there were so many moving parts. It was really cool. So it's definitely possible. <laughs> possible by me? I don't know. <laughs> but possible by someone. Okay, I've gone ahead and placed all of the windows. So we have a total of uh, 6, 12, 18, uh, 24, 20, 30, I mean. <laughs> 36, uh, 42, 48. We have a total of 48 windows, each one requiring uh, 25 bulletproof glass and 10 girders. So we need 480 girders, which I think we have all of, uh, if I put the girders that I have back in here. We might have almost exact, I don't know if we have enough girders. We'll, if we don't, we're a little bit short. Uh, but then 25 times 48 is gonna be a little different. 25 times 48 is the same as 100 times 12. So we need 1,200 bulletproof glass. We do not have enough of that. However, we do have enough that we can at least start and then maybe do it by hand, the rest of them. So let's grab our welder ship and uh, disconnect here. Let's get out there and weld. Our ship might actually be perfectly sized for this. Let's see. Can we just go right up to this? Yeah, we can. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. And we can just weld these. There we go. Makes this job very easy. We don't have to carry the materials. We don't really have to do anything except for fly this pattern right here. Woo, gotta be careful there. Okay, materials, we only have 50 more of those. Okay, I don't think we have anything else on this ship that we can use, but let me just run through here and uh, and click on these to see if they can use anything. All right, let's head back to base. We're gonna land this thing and we're gonna go finish up those windows. It should only take us a couple trips because we need probably 400 more uh, bulletproof glass, which I think we might be able to carry. I don't know how heavy that is. We cannot carry anywhere close to the amount of bulletproof glass we need. Dang, okay, we really should have just loaded it in this thing, shouldn't we have? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll carry it by hand. We only need 400, it's gonna be three trips. 180 plus 180 is three, 
60. So we should only need 40 more bulletproof glass. All right, let's see if I calculated right. If I did, we only need 40 more bulletproof glass, which, uh, nope, I calculated wrong because we need, these each require 25. So yeah, I calculated a little bit wrong. Now I'm over here wondering how I got my calculations wrong <laughs> on how much bulletproof glass we needed. I mean, obviously I didn't see this, so that, uh, wait, why did I think we needed 50? Oh, one of these was half done. Um, yeah, so how did I get my calculations wrong? I counted one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six. One was already done, seven, eight, nine. Oh, okay, I know why I was wrong. I actually counted out that we needed only eight of these when we actually needed nine of these. So I was off by one set of six. So, whoops, my bad. But nope, we're good. And now this thing is looking a little better. Let me show you what it looks like from the outside because I think you'll you'll see what I mean by uh, it looking better. Um, now instead of, uh, well, now it looks like all black, pretty much. That's the nice look that uh, I was going for. So instead of having these little bits where you can just see through and it looks fine, it looks all black like this. It even looks a little bit like a skyscraper. And if we were to go inside, we could actually stand on these and just look out kind of like we were able to before. So it doesn't really change much about the interior. <laughs> It's just the exterior. Um, although now I bet if we wanted to try and pressurize this, we're, we're a little bit closer. How crazy would that be to pressurize this entire thing? What would we have to do? We would have to get like, uh, we'd have to figure out what to put in here. I don't think there is anything that you can put in here that would pressurize. You, you'd need to uh, do something with merge blocks. Okay, here we go. Finishing these up, finally, there it is. All right, now if we press the red button, these should both close uh, in an emergency mode. Yep, you can kind of see that one closing right there. And this one is definitely closing. We'll look out the window once it's finally closed and we'll be able to see it. Oh, let's go down a little bit. Yes, there we go. We can see that that one is closed and so is this one. I wonder what it looks like actually from the outside. Uh, we have to open these individually, so I'll open the inner first. And we'll go check out what it looks like uh, with that thing. Okay, yeah, I kind of like that. Uh, I think it looks a little bit weird. It actually looks like it should definitely be wider, doesn't it? It looks like we should have one on this side and one on that side as well, on both. Um, so maybe we will make it a little wider. And that would make sense as well, because uh, even though it'd be wider on this and then thinner on this, I think we're going to get a Reaver soon. We have Combat Phase Active. I think that's something that the... That must be something the Reavers added, because every time a Reaver attacks us, we get Combat Phase has ended afterwards. Um... So, yeah, I think that's how that works now. I don't know. Eventually what we're going to do, and in fact I can do this while we're chilling here waiting for the Reaver to attack us, we're going to come back here with this thing, and we're going to go down. So this right here is going to connect, let me turn my light, uh, with what's below us. So the, um, the, the new hangar we just built is right below us. This is going to eventually connect with that and allow us to uh, get to it securely. Actually, you know what we're going to do? Let's incorporate the lighthouse while we're here trying to incorporate uh, the underground area. Let's go ahead and incorporate the lighthouse too. Uh, starting here. Oh shoot. <laughs> oh shoot. <laughs> okay, let's turn off our welders. Okay, welders are off. We should now be safe to uh, destroy this block. They really didn't want us to. Okay, the welder's not directly under that. That's good. All right, we're kind of getting there. Um, I, I went down a little bit and it actually fits pretty well. So here you can go down to the basement. This is all heavy armor. So if they try and destroy this, uh, the heavy armor will um, stop it stop from being destroyed. So that's good. We're going to go down one more. I don't know exactly where the, uh, the thing is. It must be a lot lower, isn't it? How many blocks is it lower? So this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh my gosh, it's seven blocks lower. We've gone one, two, three. We've gone three. And there we go. There's our connection. All right. So we now have a stairwell that goes through all this madness right here, by the way, um, up to our lighthouse. So our lighthouse not only goes up, but also goes down, um, down to here, which we're eventually going to put in some actual uh, protection for. It needs a lot of it because the Reavers can definitely just shoot right through here. Uh, not that they would. They'd probably shoot at stuff that's on the top, but... Still, we don't want to give them the opportunity, but this goes all the way down here and then you can come over to the control room from there. I'm going to leave this little access right here so that if we want to fly into the control room, i.e. 90% of the time, we can use that. But uh, this is also going to continue downward into the um, bunker. So that'll be the way that you get to that. 
Although that said, maybe it will not continue into the bunker. Maybe it'll just go to the side or something and then find a way to the back where it will then go down to the bunker. I think that makes more sense. I don't want a stairwell coming down right in the middle of this thing. So, yeah, okay. Uh, let's wait for that reaver because we're in combat mode enabled or whatever. So let's uh, let's get that reaver attacking us and then we'll end the episode with that. Oh, there it is, I think. Yes, that's the reaver slayer. All right, we're going to go to Ernie then, or Bert in that case, because that Bert, Bert is on the right side. I don't see any distractions, so that's good. Ooh, that's a big shadow. I don't know if Ernie will have a shot, but Bert certainly will with me at the helm. Maybe that's the mistake. Maybe I shouldn't be at the helm, because they usually tend to take them out pretty easily. I don't know what the range of this thing is, but I'm going to start firing once it reaches two kilometers. Um, and that's probably good. All right, light him up. Oh my gosh. I'm seeing hits. I'm seeing hits. There he goes. Enemy down. <laughs> what the heck are you firing at? <laughs> uh, it was down already, my friend. <laughs> All right, everybody, with that, we're going to end the episode there. Uh, we built two new ships and we did a little bit of work on the, uh, the bunker. Let me show you how we did this as well, of course, the windows. But let me do, give you one last look of the bunker. This is our new bunker. Well, not new bunker, but it's our newly completed bunker. Um, the only thing I think that we want now in it would be that stairwell, which we'll eventually put in. It, it will be in the back. Um, it's really for aesthetics and for uh, for it being realistic, because I, I doubt we'll ever really use it, <laughs> other than the uh, the one time to show you, hey, this is what we have now. But um, anyway, yeah, that's that. And uh, we also did the two ships, which are over here. Um, and I'll show you. This is our Gen 3 lineup so far. We'll eventually have probably a uh, either a grinder or a hauler, or maybe both, I don't know. But this is our miner right here, with um, one more mining thing than the previous one, and a lot more storage capacity. And this is our welder with, uh, well, a lot more storage capacity, pretty much. Um, I'm going to put these on the workshop. If they're not in the description below, let me know in the comments, please, and I will uh, link them for you guys. Um, so just if you guys want to uh, check these out. But anyways, if you guys like this episode, please hit the like button, put your comments and your suggestions down below in the comments section, and I will see you guys in the next episode of Space Engineers Survival on Pertam.